Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Your co-hosts, Jamie Albright and Sarah Rosette, couldn't be more different. In fact, they're a study in contrasts. However, despite all of their differences, they agree that sharing what they wish they'd known, both the good and the bad, is the key to moving forward. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Them podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week we have Wendy Vela with us, and she is great to talk to. Oh, so fun. Yeah, so So she writes uh, romance. She writes Mm -hmm. contemporary and historical, Mm -hmm. and we dig into that. And this was, we covered so much in this interview. Yeah, yeah. And Wendy's from New Zealand. So um, for those of you listening, between me and Wendy, you might need a translator for this episode. (laughs) (laughs) But Wendy is so fun. Um, She is uh, one of the four members of the Spa Girls podcast, Mm -hmm. which is uh, a self-publishing author's podcast. It's a great podcast, especially if you're... um, just kind of getting into writing or, or indie, indie publishing and, but they have great advice for everybody. I listen to it every week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we talk a little bit about the podcast and how they got started and what they focus on. And, mm-hmm. um, and then we talked a lot about um, Wendy's doing a, she's decided to rebrand her contemporary books. We talked about that mm-hmm. and that was interesting. And we talked about how her mindset, like mindset, we talked a lot about that, about mm-hmm. like, when she went from traditional to indie and then her mindset around her future, like she talked about how she wants to take each product, like each book and turn it into like three different things like translation, audio, maybe a different large print or something. So I thought that was really interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wendy's so. very smart and um, she's one of my favorite people. So yeah, it was a fun interview. So what's been going on with you? Well, um, I'm, doing some writing. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of been slow, slow and steady, but I can kind of, the end of the book is beginning to come together. So that's mm-hmm. my Christmas book. So yeah. I actually know, you know, what I want to write. I just have to do it. The, I have to <laughs> take the time and get it out of my head onto paper. And it's a little bit hard right now because my house is really crowded. Yeah. So I work better when it's quiet at yes. home, when there's nobody else around. Nobody else around. <laughs> I know. Oh, no, but I did hear, like, I have two interesting things to talk about. One is um, Ally, the Alliance of Independent Authors. Mm-hmm. They sent out an email uh, this week, which uh, by the time this goes out, it will be last week. But um, if you are a member of the, their organization and you're, um, they have some services for authors that they didn't have before, one of them is an Ask Me Anything advisory service. Mm-hmm. So, like, for people who have questions about, uh, about literary agents, representation, things like that. And then they have um, one-off representation on contract offers. So like if you have a contract and you want somebody to review it, Mm -hmm. which that's always, you know, kind of a thing that awesome. get a little paralyzed about. Mm -hmm. And then they have full rights representation to qualifying ally authors. And that would be at the authorpreneur level. So that's like the, there's like different levels you can join at. So if you join at the authorpreneur level, then you can, see if you can get literary representation. So I think that's really great because Mm -hmm. there are certain things, you know, I love being indie, but there's certain things about it that it would be nice at times to have an agent, especially Mm -hmm. like with foreign rights and things. Yeah. I think we've talked about this before because it's just tricky when you don't speak the language and, Mm -hmm. and just to make sure people are legit, you know, when you Mm. get an email, you don't really know. And it can be hard to word out, you know, right. Who's, who's, who's a, white hat and who's a black hat. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and then I have one other fun thing that um, I saw this uh, is cartoons for writers in the Mm -hmm. guardian. And uh, you can just Google um, mathematical problems for novelist cartoons. (laughs) It it will come up and they're just so funny. It's this guy, his name is Tom Gauld, G A U L D. And I guess he does cartoons Mm -hmm. for the guardian every so often. And so like one of them was, um, you know, Jamie has finished her novel and sent it to her editor. Her editor requires her to delete three chapters and rewrite eight. How much wine will Jamie consume? 
<laughs> that evening. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I'll link to that just because it was funny because there's that lots about funny. writing in that. Yeah. So That's what about funny. you? What have you been doing? Uh, oh, uh, well, I hired a personal assistant and it's Adriel who was on the podcast. Um, and I hired her to help me with my art team mm -hmm. uh, because my book's coming out in July and um, she's gone in and kind of got rid of some of the dead weight off of my old art team. She's created a new art team and we sent out a form um, to those readers and it just, you know, because here's the deal. I don't mind giving you a free book if you're going to leave a review, but if you're not going to leave a review, then we might not be, our goals might not be the same. So, um, <laughs> So on the form, it asks for, you know, just to show us one of your reviews. It doesn't yeah. have to be even on a recent book. It just has to be heavy reviewed, right, you know, for us. And that's really helped. Like, I was thinking the other day, I should probably be doing something for my art team. And I was like, no, somebody else is doing it. So <laughs> that's really great. And then she's going to take the um, comments from my art team, you know, if they find any proof. Uh, issues and stuff and correlate those so that I don't have to go through, you know, a yes. hundred emails. So uh, that will be nice. And yes. yeah, she's just, it's been great. She's very efficient and she's got great ideas and I, that's, it's exactly what I needed for right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know in the future what we'll do. It's sort of on a, um, and that's the great thing. As needed. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that kind of paralyzed me in the past is it's like if I hire a personal assistant, like it's forever or <laughs> I don't know what to give her. And, and this is just kind of a as needed and as things come up and, and I'm learning and she, you know, mm -hmm. she's actually teaching me some things, which is really great. Um, and then nothing much. We've been uh, watching the Hunger Games. Uh, we started with book with the, the first movie and my husband had never, he had read book one, but he had never seen the movie. So we've been watching those and uh, that's been fun, but I've been having hunger get, we're on the next to less movie. And so I'm having hunger game dreams, which oh, no. not, yeah, I know not too good. <laughs> um, but it's just such a great, I, I forget all the time. What a great, just innovative and cool story it was for me. I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what's going on. Just getting ready for release. I'm, I'm still kind of plotting out or my version of plotting out um, the next story in this series. And so I'm hoping by the time I, this book goes live, I'm already in the writing process of the, the second book. So that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. So I'm, it's been a, it's been an okay week, you know, today yeah. I got out and ran some errands and I felt like a free woman. Like, <laughs> like I was running from prison. Uh, I was just um, was like, yeah, but you know, had my mask on and was very careful, but still. So this is really funny. You said you're having dreams about hunger games, mm -hmm. stress. So yeah. I had a stress dream the other night that I was in the grocery store without my mask. Uh -uh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are not going to, speaking of that, today as I'm coming home, I heard, a, you know, I listen to country music. There is a country music song and I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, this sounds, I hadn't heard it before. And I was like, oh, it sounds pretty good. And then he says, um, all the things we'll do when we're not six feet apart. And I was like, oh, no. what? <laughs> and then I, I listened close, more closely and it's a total pandemic country music love song. And I'm like, okay. We have gone over the line. Oh my goodness. Over the so, line. So there will be a study done someday of yeah. all the creative things beginning with the memes and yes. progressing on from there yes. to songs, books, videos, yes. movies, things that are made because this yes. has been such an unusual time yep. for us yeah, in our culture. Yeah. So we'll be like 80 years old. Well, I remember back yeah. during the pandemic yeah, and exactly. our people will be like, oh, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mask that I framed and That's put right. on the wall. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we should get to the interview. Yeah, we should. We should. Okay. You guys right. enjoy Wendy. So today we're really excited to have Wendy Bella with us today. How are you, Wendy? I'm very well. Thank you. Hey, Wendy. How are Hi, you? Hi, Jamie. Good. I'm really excited to be here. 
<laughs> Wendy's joining us all the way from New Zealand. So this is very yes. exciting. An yes. international, another international call. Very yes. from, from, from the future, I believe, if yes. I've got my time zone Yes, right. exactly. Yes, it's tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it is tomorrow. It is Wednesday here. That's awesome. Oh, well, Wendy, would you start us out and tell us a little bit about the genres you write in and how you got into writing? Sure. So I write um, Regency historical romance and contemporary romance. Uh, I started out with um, the historical side of things first. Um, and writing sort of um, is something I've always sort of dabbled in, but mainly like short stories and stuff like that. But it wasn't actually till I went to London when I was in my um, 20s to work that I worked um, for a London stockbroking firm and it was really boring. Um, so I started writing a book by hand and uh, that was really the beginning of a very angsty, nasty piece of writing, <laughs> which, which when I, I read it now and again and it's really bad. Um, but yeah, and so from there, um, I came back and I started entering, uh, when the kids were little, I started entering a few short story competitions, um, which quite often I read sitting, wrote sitting on the sink bench with my grandfather's typewriter so the kids couldn't get at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I joined Romance Writers of New Zealand probably, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe a long time ago. Um, and that sort of changed everything because I started to enter competitions and, um, the competitions for me were really important because it sort of tracked how I was doing. I'm someone who needs to have that to understand that I can actually go forward. I need someone, needed someone to tell me that I was on the right track. Mm -hmm. So I entered this particular competition multiple years and I was did well, did well, did well. And then I came, I came second and got Reader's Choice in the following year because that's me, I, I wanted to win it. So I, mm-hmm. I won it. That particular year I then um, submitted to um, Random House and oh. got accepted. So that oh, was wow. pretty much where the journey started. Um, and I was, tradi- I was traditionally published through their Love Sweat line first up. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, I entered a lot of contests too um, yeah. when I first started, but they were great because they yeah, really the do feedback. help you. See, yeah, the feedback is, I mean, some of it was off a little bit, yeah. but it was great because you usually got three judges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you had two say the same thing and one say something not, yep. you know, kind of off, you you had a, kind of a majority to go with. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought they were great too. I, the feedback itself, I, the first feedback I got was horrific. Yeah. Um, it was actually <laughs> really, really horrific. And I remember sitting there with Cheryl, actually, a friend of mine, um, and, she, and, she, and she read it and she said, oh, that's um, quite brutal. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I said to her, yeah, you know, maybe I should, maybe I'm not in the right game, you know, not thinking about <laughs> this is not for me. And she said, no. She said, you know, you just need to knuckle down and, and you know, learn your, learn your craft. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, well, yeah, actually, that's really sensible. That's what I need to yeah. do. It's yeah. like any job, isn't it? Yeah. And that happened to me in critique group. Like, they were brutal. I mean, they needed to be brutal. But so that when I entered my first contest, I did well in it because I had had six months of them just ripping it apart and <laughs> yeah. helping me build it back up. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's hard, though. It's hard to hear. The, I think the, it's still hard to hear, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's you still know? hard to hear. I'm you not know, you get an edit back, it, yeah. and you get an edit back, and you're like, "Why don't you love it like I did? What's your problem here? <laughs> you know, it's brilliant. Clearly, you don't know. You see? And it's like yes. when you get a review. It's the same when you get a review. You're like, "What is your problem?" <laughs> exactly. It's clearly yeah. you, not me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no way. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 Well, tell us what your first big success was. Um. Well, my first big success. It's, bit, it, it's sort of a bit of a tough one. It's probably winning that competition um, mm-hmm. and then getting picked up by Random House because mm-hmm. at that stage I'd, I'd been going to conference after conference after conference after conference and meeting all these editors and meeting all these, you know, um, writers who were published. So for me mm-hmm. to just take that big step and then mm-hmm. and then finally get picked up, that, that was a, a huge moment for me. Um, yeah. And it, it's sort of, to, in my mind, it started, it was like I'm there. Mm-hmm. Not so so was it a one book deal or was it a multiple book deal? It was a one book deal. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we had to do a lot of changes, a lot of tweaks, a lot of edits. And But, you know, in my mind at that stage, it was like, okay, it's a one book deal. I'm going to sit back now and I'm going to get a lot more deals and mm-hmm. everything's going to start rolling. And, and mm-hmm. it didn't happen that way. And that 
was really brutal. I, I got an agent um, and I submitted and I submitted to, to my editor at Random House and I did all sorts of things. I did it right and I was getting these replies of, um, oh, actually, um, this doesn't meet what we're looking for at the moment. You know, mm-hmm. this is not where we're at, you know, and I was just like, right. what? You know, so it was actually really demoralizing because I had heard that the second book was a, was hard to sell, but mm-hmm. I didn't think that was going to happen to me, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> as you do. Uh, and so I, w- I had these books, you know, like I'm quite a prolific writer. And so I had mm-hmm. these books and I was, I was like, what do I do now? I was really, really stumped. My editor wasn't, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like my agent was working for me. Mm-hmm. Um or I was writing bad stuff and I, I really couldn't work out what. So, yeah, it was pretty tough. Um, at that stage, it was pretty tough, but I had a, a, a really vital group of friends who mm-hmm. um, are still friend, very close with me today. And they were the ones who really rallied around and said, hey, I think it's time you looked at self-publishing. Okay, that's yeah. what, that was going to be my next question. So yeah, when did you, you get into it? How long did you do the whole so. Pit- to that I, book I fir- and that before yeah, you know. I first I first published in 2013 with mm-hmm. Random House, mm-hmm. and then that was in the January and in the November of that year I self published my first book. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I had written this book, and this book had done very well in a competition. I had my critique group had slashed it apart. I'm not going to lie, mm-hmm. uh, and then I'd rewritten it, um, had it edited. And then I, I'm just like, well, what, you know, I was like, oh, okay. I had to turn my mindset around because I had this traditional publishing background. This is where I was going to go. This is what I had led to believe was the way to go. Mm-hmm. So I had to turn that around and go, okay, now I have to learn to be a publisher as well mm-hmm. as, you know. So it's actually quite a big mind shift from the traditional publishing side of things where you just give them the book. I mean, you are your own publishing house when you're, aren't you right. self-published? And that was a huge mind shift for me. Um, so that's that was a, and what I realised too with self publishing fairly quickly is the book that they turned down is actually still my bestseller. Mm. So you know, I, for me, I learned very quickly that I write fast, so I can actually put it out fast. So that that was something I was never going to be able to do traditional. Yeah. 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 So yeah. going forward, that that was how it worked best for me, um, mm. and just and I just sort of I, I sort of went that route for net from that moment on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very common for um, people who have the, have come from the traditional world into the indie world. They're kind of come up against a brick wall sometimes with traditional publishing. And I remember thinking when I would start seeing people do well as indie and I knew some of them had been dropped by their publishers or things had changed or their line had been dropped or closed. And I thought sometimes New York doesn't really know what Mm -hmm. readers want. And if you look at the list of the bestsellers, you can tell that some of the things that they rejected do amazingly well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just the benefit of being indie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is a huge mind shift uh, Mm -hmm. when it, it, it sort of comes almost in the early days, it came with a bit of a stigma. Mm -hmm. Self publishing wasn't, as good as traditional publishing and I think it's probably still out there a little bit Mm -hmm. um but uh, you know for me it's been it's it's actually created a career and a job a position I wouldn't have had that had I stayed traditionally publishing right so what do you wish you had known about writing and craft since looking back now well I think probably the the how important editing is um when I when I entered the competitions there was a trend and it was you know, this comma does not go here because I'm a huge believer of just chucking a comma in where I think it goes. I, it I use them like condiments. Yeah, I just exactly. Them about. Flash exactly. those babies about the place. You know, like grammar and punctuation are not. <laughs> Me <not>. either. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. And you know, I understand that as a weakness, and that's mm-hmm. something that I never would even attempt to do. Mm-mm. So. I entered another competition, and the judge came up to me and said to me, "Oh, you know, this is a really great book, but there is no way anyone is ever going to read it mm-hmm. <laughs> when they can't understand it, <laughs> you know, because you put commas in there uh, and things like that." So, I think early on, I, I wished I'd understood how important editing was, and that if your budget is very, very small, then that is what you need to spend it on, uh, because. 
that's what is going to get them to sell the next book and that's you know that sort of thing so editing was something I really wished I'd known and and you know got sort of focused on yeah early on yeah I'm so bad at it that I actually saw a typo in a friend's ad oh not their ad their blurb and I I almost didn't say anything because I was like, I am not the person <laughs> to notice. <laughs> like, and I, I probably, cause they know me and I, I was like, listen, I know I'm not that person, but you might want to check it cause I could be wrong, but I might be right. So and it was, it was a typo, but I mean, a, like a little grammar mistake, yeah. but it was just hilarious because I was like, oh. I'm really not the person to even bring this no. up, but. For your it's like Oxford, Oxford comma thing and that, oh, you yeah. know, I'm just like, not, not your girl. Don't come there. But it just goes to show that that's one of those things that can be learned or it can be, we can outsource the yeah. editing, you know, like that shouldn't hold people back, you know, right. because no, I'm right. certainly not very good at grammar. And my high school English teacher was like, you are a C student, basically. So you wouldn't think like a C student would go on to be able to write books, but you can. Just my school reports say, my school report yeah. says uh, she has no creative writing skills. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I found them the other day and my husband's like, did you know you've got no creative writing skills? <laughs> oh, so that hilarious. was great. Yeah. Well, the valedictorian of my class called me after I'd published, I guess, the second book of, of my series. And he said, he, he called me for writing it or publishing advice, but this is how he started the call. Jamie, who would have thought you'd have been a writer? You oh. didn't know a dangling participle from a comma splice in high school. And I was like, guess what? I still don't, but the bank doesn't care. So, yeah, exactly. But someone else does. I'm and that's hanging my... up now. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you talk to him. Yeah, I do talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yeah, I mean, it's the truth. It's like, that was it's my struggle for sure but i can tell a story so there you go the same yeah so um tell us then uh what you wish you'd known about marketing uh when you started i think you know, uh, it, it's tough. You know, I come from a, a real estate background and um, raising children, and and for me, it, when I writing was wasn't something I trained for, and, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 I say this to a lot of people. You know, doctors train for four years or, or, or whatever. Writers don't. We grow without with our job. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I wished I'd. I wish I'd really taken the time to start learning about marketing, like, uh, you know, taking some courses. Of course, it's always changing, but the basics, I I wished I'd spent more time learning about the marketing side of things and so that I'm not playing catch up with that now. I was a bit of a, um, I was really lucky. My first book sold very well. Uh, and when I first self-published, it was at a time where you could throw that sucker up there and it would sell, whereas now it's very different. Um, So I got sort of lured along a little bit. It wasn't until I started to understand this marketing side of things a bit more that I realised that actually it can really, really help with the performance of selling the book, et cetera. So that's probably something I wish I'd spent a lot more time um, just just slowly building my knowledge base on marketing. And the other thing would have been um, starting my email newsletter, you know, from dot. Like I think yeah. probably everyone says everyone, that, right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's you know that's your sort of direct route to to your readers, and no one can take that from you. And that's that's vital. I think that's yeah. that's just a huge thing. Um, so I wished I'd spent a bit more time uh, doing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do well, you we've... think it's possible now for, especially romance, um, a writer to kind of be an organic hit? You know what I mean? Or do you think we, we have to use marketing to get our books seen? I, I've wondered that. Yeah, I, I, I think... I think those that are organic are very rare now. Um, I mm. think perhaps they were were a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just there's just too many books out there now. I think uh, and, and, and unless you can throw a bit of marketing at your book, I don't. I would be very surprised if you would become a huge success. And you know, 
make a living out of it. But having said that, I think there probably are still those outliers, um, and and right. it could be genre specific as well. But I think in so. the genre that we choose to write in, I mm-hmm. I think that the market is flooded. So I yeah. think it's vitally important that to get your book, you know, out there, you mm-hmm. need to invest some money in it. Right. I agree, just, but I, it, but I don't want to discourage people either. No, but I do think that you know learning to market your book even before you have money to market your book is a good yeah. is a good absolutely thing. yeah. The thing is, you know, you can be talking five dollars a day, absolutely. As well, yeah. you know, you don't have to be de chucking thousands of dollars at it. You, right. you can be yeah. it can be five dollars yeah. a day, and it's smarter and, to start small and then absolutely. build up. Mm-hmm. From yeah. the, and, the, and cost. the marketing is not just about throwing money at it. It's everything, isn't it? It's your book cover's got to be right. Your blurb's got to be right. It's got, you, you know, your brand has got to be right. Everything mm-hmm. has to be on point. Mm-hmm. And even more so if you haven't got the money to throw at your book. Yeah. yeah. Exactly well, it. I was going to ask you real quick, since you mentioned covers, um, earlier we were talking before we started recording and you said you're just recovering all was it all your books or all of the series no the contemporaries um, i mean the historicals have always really sold well for me i I started those early um i had some advice Mm -hmm. and um from someone and she said do not start both at once let's build your historical brand and then we'll you know because that that was she said that just seems to be the best way to go forward so we did that i think i published probably 10 historicals before i even put a contemporary out but the contemporaries have never really, I and mean, they do well, but it, they're swimming in a bigger pool, a much mm-hmm. bigger pool. Yeah. So I, I have brought um, my daughter online as an assistant as well, and she did a um, survey on the top 100 books selling in contemporary, and we went through all the covers and all that sort of thing, and we did, we did a real number-crunching thing, and she said, these are the ones, Mum. These are what you've got. Covers are just too old. They're just they're just too dated. They're not they're not you know they're not really selling the book that you're writing. So um, we had them all redone. Um, I modernised the blurbs. Totally different book now. My daughter with having my daughter on board because she's younger. She had that. I was coming at it from a more um, from an older um, standpoint, more traditional um, covers and blurbs, and she was like meh. You know, so she started working with me and we started tweaking them and we, we made the blurbs more like the books were actually written inside. So I modernised them all. And I did them really from a standpoint of how my kids speak to each other. Um, and so that sort of changed everything. And I, I changed everything over last week and I have already noticed a spike. Oh, that's great. It's already started. Yeah. yeah. But what a big started. job. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Oh, my gosh. And how smart to look at what's selling. And then go from that yes. instead of because a lot of times we think we know what will work, but until we really crunch the numbers, like you said, we don't really know. So yeah, and I think you know I'm probably at that stage in my career where having you know I can get I can get people to look into things like that for me because I, I think as authors we struggle with doing everything, so we do everything to forty percent instead of everything. It, two or three things to 100%. Uh, and, and I'm a prime example of that. I, I have 50 things on the go at once and never finish them. And so for me, it was, okay, what am I strong at? So what can I give to these people who are going to help me? And that really turned everything around. And, and she came in with a totally different set of eyes. And she's been updating and tidying and looking at things that I would never have looked at that I was just quite happy to leave. So that, I think yeah. that's been really, really vital. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Really awesome. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it, I mean, if you're listening out there, this is so important. This is a hard thing. I mean, what Wendy's talking about is not something that happens overnight or over the weekend. I mean, this has taken you a long time, and but it's worth the, it's worth the work, and um, I think that that's really important. Yeah. You hear yeah. crying in the back. It's, it's oh, my grandson. So, so yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, I think for a newbie, I would say just really think about your platform Mm -hmm. when you start. I don't think I had the sort of, um, I don't, didn't do that. Uh, Really think about the direction you want to go. And, you know, we can always tweak in this game and that's the really great thing about it. But really think about what your brand is, what you want to portray yourself as and start in that. Like Jamie's done that. Sarah's done that. If you look at their work, you know exactly what they are. 
and and I try to be the same. And I think that that's really vital for a new person starting out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, to because just, that will that will make up for the lack of money in marketing. Exactly. If you mm-hmm. have a brand exactly. that that is that stands out that says um, this is that this is this kind of book or Jamie Albright writes these book, kinds of books and people know that, then that yeah. will, sometimes I don't have to market to a certain group of people because I already know. Yeah. They know, if they look at that cover, they're going to know this yeah. is the kind of book for me. So yeah. Plus you've yeah. got that audience. You've both got that audience like I have now. When a book comes out, you know X amount of people are going to buy it yeah. because they've been waiting for it. Yeah. But you don't have that luxury when you're first starting out. Not when you're right. first. Yeah. So important to just be narrow at first and very specific. Yeah. So. And focused. Yeah. So one thing we like to talk about on the podcast is, um, have you ever made a mistake that turned out to be a good thing? So, um, well, yeah, I sort of, not, I, I don't think I could really pinpoint, but I think probably the own wasn't really a mistake. I started writing a series, which I, I pitched to Random House. Mm-hmm many years ago um, and it was a historical romance with a touch of paranormal and um, everyone was like that's a huge mistake no way will that take off do not under any circumstances <laughs> random house rejected it my agent just almost laughed and it was like and I was like you know and I just kept plugging along with the series coming along and, and my sister at the time she's like oh I don't know when you know with a big risk you know you write a certain way and I'm like I look I said I feel that I write historical romance a certain way and this is historical romance with just something slightly different about it I think they're going to buy it I think they're going to love this family and so we we launched those suckers one after the other and we covered them up and and this is my bestsellers so it's I know. it's like you know, the thing about self-publishing is, and, and, and as a traditional publishing background, we were taught that this wouldn't work and this would. Mm-hmm. But the lines in self-publishing, they blur, you know, they really mm-hmm. do. And if you write something people love, people will read it. And that was what I had found. I had had enough of a fan base and um, that in historical, that they were willing to take a punt on the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so that was probably the mistake that turned out really good. Yeah, awesome. it would probably be it. Yeah. And one thing about Wendy that I love is Wendy will act like she's kind of insecure and I'm sure she is like the rest of us, but Wendy is so smart and she just knows like in her gut, she just knows some things And I love. We've had many conversations and I just <laughs> well, that's love it. We're the same people, Jamie. Yeah. I, know. I love very, it when Wendy gets on a roll. I know that I need to listen close because, uh, <laughs> She's going to lay down some very good knowledge at that point. Yeah, so. it's you know the thing is you don't realize you have a knowledge, and you guys will be the same until you actually start talking about it, and then you realize mm-hmm. actually over the you know I've been at this game for many 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 years, mm-hmm. and you do pick up stuff. And I think that's another learning curve that took me a while to come to, mm-hmm. and that was not everyone is the right person for you to listen to. Mm-hmm. And 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 yes. and I think once you work that out and just you know work out who's the best people to get advice from, mm-hmm. that's a huge a huge thing also because there is just so much out, out there that you can listen to, um, mm-hmm. and that really worked for me. So I started sort of just focusing on a few people that I really respected and who were doing really well, and listening to a few people that had 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 things to say that I really wanted to listen to and that and that made a difference because for a while there I was I was sort of panicking and chasing my tail a little bit oh this person said I should do this and this person said I should do this mm-hmm. and this person and it wasn't until I thought oh, oh back it up and and that for newbies I can't imagine what that would be like because there yeah. was just so much out there right so yeah. much out there and I just had this conversation with someone um I guess a couple of weeks ago she posted she was worried about images on Facebook and and so I messaged her and said really I think all you need to worry about is this and she said but I heard this and it was kind of the second or third time I'd heard her say I've heard this and I just had I just sort of said I'm going to give you this advice and you can take it or leave it because I might not be the person to listen to but you need to figure out who's making money if the people who are telling you to do things or not do things are they successful if yeah. they aren't, then thank you very much for your advice, but that's not who you listen yeah. to. You listen to the people who are doing what you want to be doing, and yeah. you find those 
like you said, two or three people and you do what they say. And I've joked about this before, you know, if Chris Fox and David Gochran told me to run around the neighborhood naked with chicken over my head, I'd do it. They would never tell me to do that, but I would do it anyway. (laughs) Because no, they because are they're just, humble people. Exactly. And that's the and, thing. And, and quite often the ones yeah. that talk the loudest aren't the ones that have got right. the knowledge. Right. And another great place to get really good information, especially if you're first starting out, is from your podcast, The Spa yes. Girls. Yeah, Because yeah, y'all yeah. really yeah. focus on, like, bring the information down to really practical, especially for people who are getting started. So yeah. we'll talk more about yeah. podcasting later. But I just had to add that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly true. Yeah. Uh, and what about the opposite, though? Something you thought, this is a home run. This is going to make my career. And then it just turned out to be a dud. You know, I thought really long and hard about that. And I really couldn't come up with anything specific. I, You know, if things don't work for me, I, I just use them as a learning curve and think, mm-hmm. okay, well, okay, that didn't work. I'm going to shove it and move on to something else. Right. Um, I, I think... I haven't really had anything that I could sort of put my finger on um, mm-hmm. that I could say, oh, that, you know, I thought that was going to be great and it didn't. Look, I've, I've invested money in things I shouldn't have. Um, mm. And I think we've all done that. Courses that, you know, yeah. sit on your computer and you never use them again because mm-hmm. the hype around them was so great and you didn't want to be the only writer in the whole world <laughs> who hadn't bought it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, uh, oh, no, you've got to buy this. You've got to, you know, and, and, and you do this. And I, I, one thing I learned very early on um, was I'm not good at a lot of um, craft. I, I have a writing style, that's what works for me, and and I try not to dilute that by doing a lot of craft now. I, I did all of that in the early years. Mm-hmm. And funnily enough, I went to um, a conference and Bella Andre was there and um, we got on really well and we were chatting and, and she saw me walk, working out, walking out of a craft workshop and she said, hey, what are you doing? I was yeah. like, I just went to a craft and she said, why? She said, we've discussed this. You and I are the same sort of people. We don't do this. It clouds our thinking. And I was like, yes. actually, she's right. I don't have to feel like I do it because I'm doing okay and I'm selling and I'm writing and this is the, this is my process. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's sort of pretty much from then I just thought, well, craft is not really, I don't yeah. need it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. you know, I think we can always Maybe you, you pick it up more instinctively, like yeah, as you're so. as you're writing, you figure things out more than yeah. I've tried taught. to plot so many times. So many times I've tried to plot. So many times I've had people on Zoom calls teaching me to plot. I've <laughs> read books. <laughs> it's just not me. Yeah, uh, but if you can accept that and go on and then like figure out what works for you, that's the most important thing, right? Because exactly. instead it of is. trying to figure out how to make yourself do something you don't want to do, right? That's, right. that's exactly. the trick. I'm, I mean, I've just published, I'll be publishing book number 40, I think it is. Uh, and and even as I was writing it, I was like, oh no, this is the way it goes. You know, I go through the same steps. It's almost like grief. You know, um, <laughs> you, you, I write the first 30,000 words and then I rewrite the 30,000 words and, and that's my process. And then bang, yeah, I'm I'm the same people. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, and it's it's you're like, faster. <laughs> yeah. And then my husband goes, I say to my husband, this is the worst book I've ever written. He goes, oh, we're at that stage now, are we? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, check my back <laughs> Yeah, took that one off. Um, he said, you're going to love it again soon, I'm sure. Just hold on. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, that's so, it's so typical, though. So oh, if we could all so just different. learn to accept how we do it is fine mm-hmm. and just keep doing it, we'd be so much happier. Yeah. But, but maybe that's part of the struggle. I don't know. Exactly. Being neurotic, I think, is yeah. what makes us who we are. You yeah, know? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's well, hilarious. we did have a couple more questions about specifically um, – contemporary and historical since you do yep. both and um one thing i wanted to ask you about because i'm doing historical mystery now and so um it's kind of sort of related not not exactly the same genre but um yeah. do you find it hard to switch back and forth between um historical and contemporary and so how do you like how do you handle that as a writer do you write one and alternate and write the other how does it work for you it's, I've got a really strange process, actually. As I'm finishing the end of one book, I'm the, it, it's like as I come into the last handful of chapters, the other book starts percolating. It's just a natural thing. It slots in. Um, I always write historical contemporary. Lately, I have written a couple of historicals in a row um, because mm-hmm. I've been writing for other people or box sets or novellas. But 
that's basically the way I, I go. I go historical contemporary because when I'm writing a historical, I absolutely hate it, and I'd rather be writing contemporary. And when I write a contemporary, <laughs> I'd absolutely hate it and want to be writing historical. Uh, but no, I have no trouble switching voices. Occasionally, I will be writing a historical and go, "Well, I don't think that word was was said in 1811." <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> or my editor will come in and go, uh, "So much on that," you know. But yeah. for the most I can change voices, which is good. Uh, Mm -hmm, I think they're two totally different genres, but they have a lot of the same feels to them, Mm -hmm, and that is mm -hmm. family, love, emotion. Mm -hmm. I write the same books, but just in different times. Yeah. 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 So do you have any tips for anyone if they're, like you say, they're writing a historical and they want to move to contemporary? uh, Yeah. Or like you said earlier that you would recommend like starting with historical first and getting established and then trying to move later or does it just depend on the writer? Well, I think it depends on the genres too. Um, I think if the genres are similar, which I believe mine are, um, I don't, I would definitely start with historical and then move into contemporary or contemporary move into historical. But if I was writing science fiction and contemporary, then I would have two two separate yeah. names. You know, part of me even thinks it would have been a good idea when I'd started to actually change the name for the contemporary because I think the marketing side of things would have been easier. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, also bought yeah. everything because this is who I am and um, Wendy Valor writes both, but there are some, I do have some that actually my readers will only read my historicals and contemporaries. Mm-hmm. So when you've got a Facebook group or, you know, that sort of thing, it's quite hard to sort of separate those out. Mm-hmm. So I think now um, if you were starting two genres, I would I would think about writing under another name. But as I say, it's not important and it's worked well for me. Um, I think it is – it depends on your time period too. That's important. You've got to research your time period and get that right. And mm-hmm. it can be conflicting. I've, I've actually never had any problems with it, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Advice-wise, not really. I mean, my link books are the same length. Um, they're just – really the same people with different the way they speak differently i actually find the contemporaries harder to write than the historicals oh. uh, is it the, part of the keeping the people apart the issue um, or? maybe but the contemporaries i find because they're this day and age um it's just you've got to be bang on i mean you do with mm-hmm. historicals but with historical fiction you have a certain amount of license because as long as you get the facts right about that mm-hmm. day you you know, no one around here lives in those times, mm-hmm. so they're not going to come up and go, well, actually, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, of course they will. Yeah. I've had many of those. but yes, um, me too. <laughs> yeah. But basically if you can get as much factually correct as you can, you've got a certain amount of license in a time that, you know, no one around has ever lived in and, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So no, nothing photographic evidence-wise, you know. Yeah. So lucky people yeah exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I sort of really don't have that much advice just write the book mm-hmm. uh, and get it edited well I think the mm-hmm. editing is vital especially yeah. with the historical yeah I, I have a specific historical editor who yeah. checks all those words that you yeah. know I use that she'll say oh did you know this did not mm-hmm. exist in 1923 yeah. so yeah so I've got one of those important. and I'm like really <laughs> God, are you sure? <laughs> she always puts a reference in there because I doubt her. Go here and you will see I'm right, you know. And I'm like, oh, Mine does oh, too really? a lot of times. A lot of times she'll give me a suggestion. She'll say, perhaps you could use, and I'm always like, oh, thank you, because that makes yeah. it so much easier. I do that. I always take up these suggestions. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't have to think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So um, tell us how being in New Zealand impacts your writing and your promotions like is it is it different not being in the states or totally like being from, a little bit isolated i don't yeah, know it is isolated. people who are more isolated if you yeah. have any yeah space. it really it can be really tough uh you know we we see you guys all flitting off to conferences and chatting to people and having weekend retreats with other writers and stuff that side of it is really really hard um, yeah. we don't, I noticed cause I came to Ram and we went out um, for a meal with a whole lot of people and these writers were all talking about things and I was like, Oh, that'd be so cool. I mean, we have some amazing writers in New Zealand, don't get me wrong. Mm. And I, we catch up with a lot of them, but we are, for us to go to a conference anywhere else in the world, it's a huge flight. Yeah. Um, unless we're just going to Australia and, and they don't have that many there. Mm-hmm. So that side of it is tough. Um, you know, you guys, you have so many conferences, you know, that you can go yeah. to. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, I I don't know that it's a problem marketing wise because mm-hmm. we do everything online anyway. Um, mm-hmm. We sell online. Yeah. Um, book signings are not something I've ever really done. Um, I don't know that there's a huge benefit in book signing if you're not a traditional publishing house and you know like J.K. Rowling. Um, so, you know, I don't think really the main drawback for us is the conferences yeah. and just the, the retreats and things like that. Mm-hmm. You guys get to intera- interact a lot more than we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's really true. expensive for, for us to go anywhere. Not that we're yeah. Going anywhere I, and when yeah. Wendy says Ram, she's talking about romance, the author mastermind. Yeah. It's this past November. And yeah, I mean, that's a huge trip for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's massive. I think it was 14 hours. And yeah. then, um, you know, you've got jet lag to get over and then it costs you quite a significant amount of money and then there's no point in going for a week. You know, you yeah. have to go for a bit longer. And yeah. um, and I went, after Ram, I went to London and yeah. with Soma Sarah, you know, and yeah. that's a massive trip for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, so we're all experiencing what, what you guys have to do a lot online because of all this COVID stuff right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess we'll, for people who are more isolated, just to take the what we've learned, like how easy it is to communicate online and network pe- with people online and just continue to do that. Um, yeah. Because I don't know that conferences are going to come back really quickly. I think a lot of people are still a little leery about yeah. traveling, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that this is the time when, you know, we always have a thing um, on our podcast, find your tribe. It's massive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as a newbie writer, it's really important to find that person, mm-hmm. your person, even if it's just one or if it's two. And this is the time where you need to be Zooming and Skyping and talking. and Because you know, we have a, we are a solitary. Our occupation mm-hmm. is very solitary. But at the same time, we can still go out the house and have coffee. And I see my writing. We'll go to cafes and write together a lot and stuff. Right. Like, and we haven't been able to do any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think now more than ever, it's really important to stay in touch with people, mm-hmm. um, yeah. other writers and talk yeah. and that sort of mm-hmm. side of things. Yeah, Sarah and our friend Danielle, we have lunch every week and yeah. we have not been able to do that. And it's been really hard for months to just not yeah. be able to sit with your friend and yeah. talk writing or whatever else you want to talk. So, yeah, yeah. that's hard. Yeah, I, Even though I we still it, Skype, yeah. we Skype almost a couple of times a, a week. I think. Yeah. 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 It is. It's, <laughs> it's important. like we're always I, on here. We zoomed. Uh, we talked a lot during the holidays. Uh, during the holidays, I say it was a holiday. It wasn't a holiday. Um, <laughs> during lockdown over here, uh, we were in lockdown for five weeks, and um, we we zoomed every day. The Spa Girls. We did a you know a, a chat, and I went out and had lunch with them for the first time last week Friday. Um, yeah, mass hysteria. Ran into the cafe. <laughs> a lot of screaming. People were moving out of our way. <laughs> But it was it was great. Like you don't realise how you mi- how much you miss that personal contact until it's know. you know. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. yeah. 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 Well, 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 so tell anyway. us, talk to us about podcasting. About yeah. um, like what what do you wish you knew about podcasting, and what do you think the benefits of it are for? Um, I think podcasting is great because it's it's really listening and getting advice on the go. Um, because you can be walking or in your car or exercising, God forbid, you know, <laughs> anything like that. And you can be doing all of that um, while you're listening and while you're learning. Mm-hmm. And um, we decided to start our podcast just purely and simply because um, uh, we felt there was a real gap in the market. And that was for newbies. Mm-hmm. And we had had a lot of traditional authors. We know a lot of traditional authors in New Zealand that have come from traditional and want to go to self publishing and didn't know where to start. So mm-hmm. for us, it was just a. Let's try and help these people get started. Mm-hmm. And so I think we're into episode 220 or I don't know, something like that now. Um, but yeah, you know, like I, I like podcasting because I tell you what, I'm not a, a reader and I don't mean that and I love fiction, but I hate it when someone says you need to read this. It's got a lot of great information. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, really? I'd rather yeah. someone told they me that. <laughs> <laughs> or I watched it on YouTube. I'm a huge yeah. YouTube girl. I, I learn everything yeah. on YouTube. I just yeah. don't like to read massive yeah. how-to books. It's not yeah, I would feel like just or... get me the high yes. points. I don't want. I don't want to know all the stuff about how great the stuff is. I just want to know the stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I, two of our spa girls are massive readers. Like they've got how-to piles that are seven foot high, and they're always, always, always telling Cheryl and I to read, and we're just like, meh. I've got one how-to book. Um, and I haven't read it all, <laughs> but you're just I like, do it all. We'll yeah. listen to you. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> like I just I learn it all online. Yeah. Just, just 
give me a little brief rundown. So I do it all yeah. on um, uh, podcasts. I listen to podcasts all mm-hmm. the time when I'm driving the car or, or riding on my bike inside the house, um, anything like that. And, and that's how I upskill. Yeah. Or something that it's something you know, like if if there's something specific someone says to me to do, I say, well, okay, send me a link. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'll read it. <laughs> uh, that, now I'm curious. It seems like y'all have pretty much moved your podcast onto YouTube. Is that? Yeah. Well, yeah. that shark. Oh, you know, we always do what she tells us to. Uh, <laughs> so basically, during the lockdown, we were zooming each other, and we said, look. There are going to be some people out there who are suffering like we were because mm-hmm. it was funny the stages of what we were going through. That you know, um, some Almost days like we were grief. happy, other times mm-hmm. we were really down. And I'm a really up person, mm-hmm. and I really struggled. My husband was home, and he was like, "Wow, I've just never seen you like this." Mm-hmm. You know, I, some days I was really, really down. So we would get on. We decided we'd get online every day and do like a little ten, fifteen, usually expanded into twenty minutes carry on, tell jokes, mm-hmm. have a bit of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and started recording, which I absolutely hated because I hate seeing myself on anything like that. But mm-hmm. it was done and, and people liked it. And mm-hmm. so Shah said, well, let's just record the podcast and put them on YouTube. So now, you know, now you can't scratch your nose. You have to tidy your <laughs> office. There's all that drama. <laughs> but, yeah, they're on there. Yeah. So it's a different audience. Mm-hmm. A yeah. audience. yeah, we've we- – talked about when we started we were like let's not do youtube we didn't want to get dressed we didn't want to have to like get dressed get her some, and in fact right now my hair i just told them looks like gaston from beauty and the beast <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so does mine. yeah i know so i but i have been thinking lately because i've been watching during this time a lot more youtube stuff and i've been thinking oh, we should probably do that at some well, point. Well, it's a weird thing. I think you actually pick up a different audience. And, and, yeah, I and think people you do too. like to see what you look like. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but if I listen to someone and I think, I wonder what they look like, I'll mm-hmm. Google them and go, oh, mm-hmm. that's not what I thought. And you know, it's um, completely different, isn't it? Yes. Totally. totally. Yes. So we Malcolm sort of thought, Gladwell. Well, oh, totally really? different. Oh, yeah. Um, I love Michael. I love his voice and I love his stuff. And I Googled him one day and I went, hmm, not exactly what I thought he yeah. looked like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm sure people think that about us I'm so we sure they do yeah um, we do that once a week um and yeah it's yeah it's interesting you can't yeah. be slooping coffee or you know uh, eating non-stop or mm-hmm. picking your nose really it's mm-hmm. all out out of the equation <laughs> yeah all out of the equation That's yeah. so sad um mm. but i love the podcast because like sarah said before it is really for um I mean, it's not just for new authors, but it is for authors that maybe aren't seeing the results they want to see or, you know, so much comes at us so fast that it's easy kind of to skip some stuff, you know, or miss miss some things. And you guys just do such a great job about bringing guests on that really break those things down. And um, you all have such great advice. I just, I really love it. It's one of my favorites. So. Uh as is and yours we'll, with us okay. <laughs> fun of we'll, we'll, have, <laughs> we'll have the link to the podcast in our show notes because it's uh, spa girls self-publishing authors correct yeah that's yeah. right spa girls yeah. podcast.com we never called yeah it don't look up spa, spa girls because you'll get a completely different look if it's lowercase okay <laughs> not what you're looking for ah, <laughs> okay just just a little warning just a little tip there <laughs> tip for yeah. me to you yeah <laughs> Well, this has been so fun. So, Wendy, tell us um, what you've done, the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success. You know, um, I'll go back to surrounding myself with people that I really respect. Yeah. Um, They have been a huge, and I will say the Spa Girls, really, I I lay it on them, Um, Mm -hmm. Shah. Cheryl Phipps, Cheryl and Shah Barrett and Trudy Cafell, Trudy, Trudy J, she writes under. You know, they have been um, really, like we like sisters now and they can be really hard on me when they need to be um, mm-hmm. because I am a bit of a wimp, to be honest. I don't like criticism. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they've been really good. They were hugely important um, mm-hmm. towards, and that, that was the beginning of setting myself up to success. Mm-hmm. I now, and also I have, I have some fairly serious goals, um, which I try very hard every year to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, small goals that I work towards and then a major one at the end. Mm-hmm. I, um, I'm really lucky in that I like writing. 
So for me, I have backed it up now and I sort of try to do four, five, four to five books a year. Um, if I only make four, that's okay too. Now I've got enough backlist out there that that's okay. Um, so I think for me, setting myself up for the future is about maximizing the product I have. So mm -hmm. in so far as how can I turn that product into three? Mm -hmm. So I will box set up the first three and the second three. I will go into audio book. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be looking at foreign translations. So it's not so much putting as much product up, out as it now as I can, up, book new fresh content out as it's, it's, it's about utilizing what I've got because I also need longevity mm -hmm. and I cannot afford to run myself into the ground with my shoulders and my hands mm -hmm. and I cannot afford to bury my head in the sand and not look at the rest of my business and just focus on the writing yeah. so I think over the last couple of years that's been something I'm really working towards um, which is why I brought on another assistant mm -hmm. and it's just investing in what I want my business to look like going forward over the next sort of 10 however many years mm -hmm. um, and how to grow it mm -hmm. so yeah I think probably those are um, what I have done to set myself up for the future yeah. um, you know I'm always happy to take on more advice if I think it's beneficial to me mm -hmm. um, but I, I sort of have a focus and a goal and that that really is the direction I'm heading in. Yeah. Also, like every other writer, wants to retire a husband and then that's going to happen at Christmas. Oh. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, that's if so he will exciting. actually leave. Yeah, yeah. so um, he's fantastic and he's worked really hard his entire life to make sure that, you know, his family are really cared for. But, you know, he's, he's ready. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, he's really good with, with money which and finances, which I can tell you right here and now I'm not. Mm -hmm. So he'll probably take over that side of it as well. So, yeah, that's probably really what I've done. That's awesome. That just makes that's me so, so happy to me hear too. that you're, you're planning on figuring out a way to be successful without killing yourself physically and emotionally and mentally because right now yeah. there's so much emphasis on production and producing so many books per year and yeah. I don't think we can continue this I mean I know I can't I mean like three books a year for me is like about max and yeah I want to be able to have a life besides writing so just absolutely just and if I only put out that. three I'm happy with that too you know and um, that, that here's the point is you're not going to please everyone, but the one person you need to please is yourself. And yeah. I think that that's, that's really important. We get bogged down with all these fans going, when's this next book coming? And 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 da 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 da, da. And it, it, you, you start to feel yourself getting worked up. And I'm like, oh, back up the bus. I'm actually the one who's writing this stuff. This is my work. I'll put it out when I, when I want it yeah. to be out. Yeah. But we, we do get, we do hear publish, publish, publish constantly. Um, and, and for those people, good on them for fast release. I really, uh -huh. I take my hat off to them. They are so impressive. Uh -huh. I just, I can't be doing it. No. Yeah. Now. No. And I, I just had this conversation with myself in the, in the shower a couple of days ago because I don't release a book very often. So when I do release a book, I feel like I feel a lot of uh, pressure for that book to do well. Yeah. But during this time of COVID and, I mean, who knows how it's going to do. And it has been almost a year since I put a book out. So I've just, I was just like talking myself down from the edge going, okay, for me, if, it, if nothing else, if there were no readers, no other authors, which is my problem, I always compare myself, what would be a success for me? You know, looking yeah. at what I've done before. Or to, and it did help calm me down a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. So, but you Comparisonitis. Yeah, the comparison so hard. That was is hard the worst. And also the fear of waking up in the morning and mm -hmm. uh, all your books are not selling and everything. You know, yes. like I was trying to explain to my husband the other day, I was like, this is a really tough game. Mm -hmm. um, it's not for the faint hearted. And I said, and we're creative people, so we're slightly neurotic anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and it, it, it's a really tough game because we're creative, we're not business minded. So we then have to learn to be both. Um, and you have to be quite objective. <laughs> step back and look at your product as well and that's tough as well because that's your baby mm -hmm. um so i think mindset wise is a there's a lot of shifting involved for me now i am able to finish a book and put it up on and forget about it it's just a product uh, but that has taken me a while to get to you know um mm -hmm. it's really tough it's really tough but yeah longevity and just you know getting those books out making sure they're good i would i don't want to put rubbish up um, and that was what that's what would happen if I had to put ten books up a year. It wouldn't yeah. be as I wouldn't have put as much into it as I as I should have. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Those are great, great things. I think that's great advice. Great yeah. advice to end on. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find out more about you? Uh, we dub dot com, um, and I'm on Facebook, Wendy Vella Author. Um, I have a readers group. Wendy Vella's Reading Bellas, uh, which mm-hmm. I have just started, and it's a lot of fun. Surprise! Wait, awesome. you've just yeah. started a reading group? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I know, Good for right? You. I Good know. For you, but I can't yeah. believe you didn't have a reading group. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was always a bit tough to be fair, Jamie, because I had two genres. So uh, my, yeah, in my head, I was like, okay, will I start a historical one, or will I start a contemporary one? Which way will I go? Mm-hmm. And f- and instantly there was more work. And I was just like, how am I going to run this? How you know what? I just go for it. All together. So yeah. you get in there and do your thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> and it's great. I really like it. I like Look, it. It works well. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. We'll put those links in the show notes. And yeah. we'll put the link to the Spa Girls podcast. And sure. you can find all of our stuff at dub, dub, dub. I always want to say that after I listen to you guys. Mm-hmm. I've known for writers.com. So it's been great having you here, Wendy. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. So awesome to be on. Great podcast, people. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.